Hi, Sportster Paul here. We're looking at solid cam chamfering. I found three ways to do it. There's an automatic chamfer, which of course doesn't always work the way you want typical automatic stuff. There's a 2D chamfer, I'll show you how to use, and then a 3D chamfer that'll go down some angles. What we're going to do is use that part I did in the evaluation, episode 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm going to go to episode 4 where it's all done, and we're doing something I don't recommend. I like to draw chamfers in the model itself. Some people like to say, oh, it's just deburring. They'll take the sharp edge on the model and chamfer it in the CAM program, like what we're going to do. If there's a chamfer on the part, I think maybe you should show it. It's not like we have 386 computers that can't have two lines instead of one on the corner. So let's go up to SolidWorks here. Uh, 2020, I've turned on... Oops, not options. What am I doing? Actually, I've already got it all ready. So we can open... This test part dash four, that's the way we, the end, last thing we did where the part was all done. This Dave Rui, my buddy, did this great test part. Here it's coming. This machine's running a little slow today. Here it is. See, now it's asking, okay, you open the SolidWorks part. Do you want to open the solid cam part? If you do this and then try to do a save or a save as, it can't copy the, the cam stuff over because the module, the add-in, is holding it open. So it screws everything up. So you cancel here. Then you do File, Save As. Remember, in SolidWorks, Save As really should be called Rename. So you want to do Save as a Copy and Open. And we're going to overwrite this one I've been practicing with, uh, Rui Test Part Solid Cam Chamfer. Replace it. Yes, please do. And now it's asking, okay, it's got that same solid cam stuff. Do you want to open it now? And yes, we do, because we're already in the new part, this, this chamfer part. Now it's asking, hey, you said you wanted to open the new document. What about the old one? Well, you close that one. And because I never trust it, I always look where window. Okay. And this is the part we want. You can also hover up here and make sure it's upside down. I don't know why. Maybe that's the way I left it. So here we are, and we're in the tab already for, uh, always pushed over. This is the tab for solid cam, all the machining. Here's a top setup where we did all the stuff on the top. Here's the bottom where we faced the bottom off uh, and did the holes, the five holes. So there's the center drill, drill, and tap. So we let's look at chamfering this top stuff. And like I say, there's no chamfer drawn in the part. And I, I spent an hour in visual mill because I'm evaluating all these packages, before I realized Visual Mill doesn't let you really do a chamfer on a sharp edge. You've got to show the chamfer or make a sketch with offset geometry or stuff like that. So here, let's go to slopes. This is the last thing we did. You can turn it on and see, you know, this is where we came down and did, did these slopes. Uh, so what do we want to do? Right click add a milling operation. Let's first, to show you why automatic rarely works, chamfer recognition. And it comes up, I'm, because I have four monitors, I got to drag this stuff for you to see. So it's, it's showing, okay, it'll do this. First thing, like all of these, the mystery button, it wants a geometry, confuses you with all this, and then this is to edit. That took a while to figure out. This is where you want to select the geometry. Simple thing to do. Now, let's see if this is screwed up like it was. See, it's defaulting to select the solid body. And if you do that, see, it's going to try to chamfer down in here and gouge and ruin and make big things. I'll save you that misery. But it's smart enough to know it can't chamfer. This is a 2D chamfer recognition. It can't do these slopes. So we're going to go here, we're going to unselect all. We're going to say, no, let's just do the faces. It won't let you choose edges, so that's another thing you're going to deal with. But this face and this face. And say, okay, those are our... Then the tool, select. Uh, here's the four tools we used before. One end mill did all the stuff, then center drill and tap. You have to learn on the unlabeled buttons of hell right here. And I found, I think the getting started had a quarter inch spot drill. Yes, quarter inch spot drill. Then what do you do? Okay, another little tricky thing. I got to love hate. I love the power of this program, but I hate how 
convoluted and hard to use some of the stuff is. I'm sure if you used it every day, like you're a CAM programmer at a machine shop, easy money. I'm sure the help guys were like that. Well, what do you mean? You hover over the stuff and it tells you what it is. I don't want to hover. I want it written out. So we want to assign, we don't want this tool number, spot drill number. Well, actually, this might actually work out. Come on, let's say it did it. But because I got this over here, you know, there's spot drill. So let's get out. I'll escape from this selection. So now we've got a spot drill. So we say accept. So there's our spot drill. Life is good. Since it knows it's chamfer and the name of this operation is chamfer faces. Geez, I wonder if it remembered this from a previous trial. Chamfer faces. Clearance safety upper level. You don't do any of that. Cutting diameter. This is what's great. You you click in this box and it shows you context sensitive. OK, that's saying 50 thousandths. A, a distance across the tip of 50 thousandths. Let's let's raise this and make it a little meatier because I'll show you what the problem that's going to cause. One way climb milling. I think all this is OK. Link. We're going to leave the defaults. It doesn't remember. Well, yeah, you'd think it would have remembered when I was practicing this all day and yesterday. We're going to leave these in to show you problems. I think we might be ready. So I'll move it over here. We'll get this guy over here so you can see what's happening. We'll go. I'm not sure the difference between save, calculate, save, calculate with all related options. But here we go. And look at that, right? And I think it did it right. What, what I what I levels you think levels would show. It's not. There's a diameter. There's the offset equal step down. See, this is one of the problem, the exasperation part. Milling levels minus 0.1. That's awful deep. Chamfer depth. Here it is. See, and, and back and forth, back and forth. Oh, OK, it needs a chamfer depth. So let's go point, 0 0.05, 50 thousandths. And that's all pretty big. And we'll show you the problems this creates. So now we'll do it again. And there we go. We'll simulate here just to show you this simulation. I don't find it very useful. It's their standard simulator. Goes around and it comes here, does this, does the inside one, can't do, close it. But then this is the reason I solo. Oh, it also lights up this bottom tool path every time I do this. So you got to go turn that off. So get out of this. And then the reason to love solid cam. This simulator, they're, they're new or they're beta. It's in beta. I guess they're still working on it. Up it comes. It's all green, which means the compare function's on. So let's look at what it does. Then it goes there. Oops, that's not good. Oops, that's not good. Oops, that's not good. Oops, that's not good. And without even turning on the compare, you know, you can see. And the reasons we asked for a big chamfer, and we went up to this point, which of course gouges this rising edge. So what I found to make this almost usable, chamfer faces, let's double click on this again, uh, milling level, chamfer depth, make like <laughs> one tenth of the depth, only go down five thousandths. And then I guess it's in technology, chamfer parameters, cutting diameter. See, we're pretty far up and the closer you get to the tip, the less the, the body of it's going to whack into those angles and slopes, right? So I think I went crazy. I think I said 0. 0.00. Well, that's almost ridiculous. Let's say 5 thousandths, which could be a real problem, right? Because mathematically, the center doesn't turn, right? There's no rotation at the center. So only being 5 thousandths out, my thinking is my, I've got an Avid Benchtop Pro. It's a router-based machine, and it's got a 24,000 RPM spindle. It's great for engraving, but bad for drilling drills. Uh, anything bigger than an eighth-inch drill, it only goes down to 8,000 RPM. But with this much RPM, let's see if we can fool this thing into doing a better job. So let's go here, go ask for our stuff. You, stuff should move really close. 
See, once again, it lit up this bottom. I don't know why. It just felt like it. I'm going to close out of this. Save and exit. And let's just do our most favorite, most beloved. Turn this off now. Now, so you can even almost see. See, we're just using the very tip of that. And if you can spin it fast enough. Now, we still got a gouge, though, right? Still got these gouges. No way around that, I guess. Maybe what happened if we went the other way and, and went all the way on the flank? No, you'd, you'd still gouge. And this is the thing with automatic. This part was designed to foul up automatic feature recognition, automatic everything, and it works great to foul things up. So let's go chamfer faces. I hate these triangles. This isn't solid cam. This is solid works. At least they could put a whole solid bar down here or make the scroll wheel work. What would we want to do? Suppress this. We're done with that. So it, it's grayed out now. So now let's do a, a normal kind of 2D go here. Add milling operation. We're going to do profile. Now why this is profile and this is contour 3D. And why this isn't contour 2D, contour 3D, or profile 2D. I don't know. Maybe there's some thinking machinists have. I don't understand it. We're doing a profile. We're back in our thing. For our geometry now, watch this. This is this is when you love this program. Select the geometry. All right. So go here. And you know, we can change the direction of this, but we want to go that way. So you say yes, yes. And say, okay, we got that one. Now remember, you can't change left and right as you're going. So I made that mistake once. So since you're going around in this direction, now you got to go down here and say, accept, accept. And it's got that. And you say, okay. And now it's got the chains. Tool it doesn't default to the last tool you use. This is grayed out because we suppress that. It's not used because of the suppression. Now it's used again because we're using it in this one. Tool. Um, da, 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 levels. It's so easy to get confused. Clearance. No, down here. Upper level. Oh, no. See, this is multi-level. It's these icons, always unlabeled because that makes everything a puzzle and people can think they're smarter than us. So variable. Watch how cool this is. Now it's variable. And I got to move it off a little so you can see. And see, they've labeled this one's one and this one's two. And they've given us this little chart. And this is what's gorgeous, right? Chain one is up here. Uh, upper level, you just click it. And that was correct. But this one's down lower. Click that. It's down where it's supposed to be. The depth, we learned about not going too deep. So let's go point oh. Five, just to start with. Do this one the same way. 0. 0.05. So that's that technology. I'm going to go through this so you can kind of see what's going on. I think that's it. No, no. See, every dialogue box is different. Here, the word chamfer, you know, at first they throw you off with the rest material and they add in chamfer. You have to say chamfer. Now, notice there's only two tabs up here. When you select chamfer, the chamfer tab appears. And with the chamfer tab, and here's where you love the program, they show you this context sensitive. When you click in this box, how far down do you want the cutter to be? We'll say 50 thousandths again. Link. See, it's got, into, and this is going to screw us up. Let's do it real quick. It's doing its thing. You can see the add-ins. I'm going to, can I close this now? Yes. Can we get rid of that stuff that lights up for no good reason? It's a bug. We go to the solid cam simulator and you'll see this thing because of the lead-ins and lead-outs. So it's got a couple problems. The lead-in lead-outs cause a problem. So that's not too hard to fix. Double click on it. Wait a second, come here, go to links, lead in. Don't put a lead in. I'm sure there's, but you know, you could probably do right angle lead in and all kinds of other stuff, but just for here, and you say recalculate. 
and it does its thing and you can barely see underneath this and you turn off the bottom and then you go here and then you go here and you do this so it's got little gouges but now I had a help guy they have tremendous help the, the personnel and the videos and all this good stuff I could have sworn he edited the geometry let's I couldn't figure out how to do that it's probably doable because I watched them do it so go up to geometry once again spent three minutes uh, oh no there's the button a little pencil means edit the geometry and you come up here and we want to edit chain two and you got to go here and say actually I think it ended up just deleting it chain two deleted then go down here and say point to point this is what saved us what was better than master cam in uh, in doing this part where we could just go from this point to that point to do this flat now we want to pull back so let's guess this is a little sloppy but let's guess right there and while it's still in point mode we might as well just do this see it's pointing we still got the right direction here point mode and then up here let's go oh maybe back here great and what's going on we're saying that chain's done we're saying our geometry is done then we got to go levels we got to go variable levels again because it got confused chain two is down here and chain two we want 0.05 say okay and say okay wait a minute i did something wrong because it's look at it it lost the uh math it lost tool pass for the face down here who knows let's do this i forgot it, it somehow because it calculates this it also goes and calculates space bottom that's pretty scary let's get out of it here turn that off go here do the magnificent simulator magnifico that's what i call this thing zip 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 zip, zip. see we pulled it back this one we pulled it back just perfect i think we made a mistake on the other but you get the principle right you can go less and less now the other principle to know is using the tip gets you out of some troubles you go here uh where is it technology so let's just work on the very tip see it's so easy I, i'm doing this real time and i can't remember here it is chamfer let's go down to 0.05 so we're going to work way on the tip of this thing and i think that'll make for less errors let's see uh, and then what else the levels no variable level and we're also only going to take come on five thousand so just a tiny little like a deburring on this one oops oh five say okay calculate we should see this line jump up yep it's almost on top it's all happy close this shouldn't close it there i should close it down here once again it lights up the bottom facing operation once again we oops wrong once again we can go simulator and watch it do its thing zing 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 and you can see now of course it's not gouging but it's also not getting as close so those are the trade-offs like i say with, with a tiny tip there i would want the spindle to be at full speed but for my machine 24,000 rpm because you got no tangential velocity as you get down towards the tip and and no cutting at all on the actual that's why drilling is such a hard operation so okay that was fun so we got that done life is good so let's take this guy let's turn it off if that matters and once again the hated triangles of solidworks suppress this one then go here add milling operation contour 3d You'll see why I was getting confused. Select the geometry. Go here. Not constant Z. I think we can do this this way. Yes. Say, now we want to do the whole Megillah because we got a 3D tool path. It says, yes, we're happy. We're happy. But then this gets to the exasperation point. The tool, they never remember the last tool you used, unlike cheaper programs but that's okay okay so now we got the right tool this is let's see upper lower it's got that right it's smart enough technology 
Okay, this is this is the exasperation. First, you got to spend three hours. Oh, chamfer. This is where we tell a contour, a 3D contour, that it's a chamfer. Gosh forbid it just has a chamfer operation you can select, but you can't highlight it. Well, that's because you got to go here and say left, which would be climb milling with the directions, blah, blah, blah. Now chamfer lights up. Now that goes and what I should have shown, see, there's a chamfer tab that magically appears that you never notice. Chamfer tab, chamfer tab, chamfer tab. Same thing. I guess with zero, it would be right on the very tip. We're going to do the same point 0, 0, 5, because we've learned about not being down too close. Milling levels, depth, I guess this is where. See, I can't remember because nothing's quite the same. Every programmer did his own dialog box. But this is a very light kind of a deburr chamfer. Let's go pull this off so you can watch it do its thing. When I make a tool path, hopefully it'll succeed. No machining. Oh, I remember what did this. See, <laughs> same problem. Where is it? Technology. Oh, no, go back here. You got to select one of these or it doesn't know what to do. That was another 20 minutes of my life. Now do this. Now do this. I don't see tool paths. Sorry, calculating. Oh, no, there it is right up here. So now we go here. 23 minutes. Let's see if we can get this done. Erase the tool paths that magically appear because of a bug. And go here and say solid cam simulator. And do our, oops, I don't know what that does. And turn on compare and look at that. Now, if we cut closer to the top of the tool, you know, that makes big errors here. And you can see there, there already is an error, right? This is wider here. How can we show it? Right here, right? This is why this simulator alone, compared to the Mastercam and Bobcab simulators, which is a module work simulator, no thanks. This thing is worth its weight in gold. So this is you know showing you all this details. It'll show you how, the taper of a tap, how close it's getting to the cone of a drill that you're putting it into. All kinds of wonderful stuff here. Go out. So that's 3D chamfering. What are we doing? We're getting out of this. So there you are. And we'll leave it on that one. Now, you know, put it all together. And my buddy watched Kenny Roberts race a motorcycle at Laguna Seca. Caught dust in one curve, went around, next curve, went around, next curve. Then he did all dust on all the corners and set a new lap record. So put these things together. Obviously, you could do these and do the slot especially if, like if you're doing the inside this one's going to be even a bigger problem because if you depends on the direction you go but you know it's going to have a different so probably if you want really consistent chamfers that that little bit of extra wi wideness you could do 2d chamfering like we did in that second try we did you know after the chamfer recognition out the door never mind but then we did a 2d chamfer of this and up here so you could do that uh, doing the tricks about not letting it gouge here by pulling back and adjusting and all that stuff. Then probably the way to do it is make another uh, a 3D chamfer with this, th I'm sorry, this edge, this edge, and this edge, because the math of all of this. And then just play around, you know, because it's all multiple and probably easiest just to keep trying, you know, pull it back, pull it back until these vert these slanted chamfers are a closer match to these here and then probably a separate chamfer for this one because the geometry and the mathematics and how it intersects that cone of the tool are all different okay so there you go it it does bother me that every dialog box seems a little different i looked at 3d or i'm sorry i looked at 2d i machining completely different dialog structure so I wish the people, they're great folks. I really like the company. I like their salespeople. I like their support people. They'll do things like if you skip your maintenance a couple years, they don't charge you the back years like SolidWorks and Mastercam. It's just like, okay, start over again. You're back on maintenance, one year's payment. So a great company. I just wish they could convene everybody in a room and say, let's make the user interface simpler and more consistent. So that's... <laughs> Yeah, that's, an, that's why it's not hate. It's an exasperation, but you can get around all that, especially if you use it every day. It's not going to be a problem. I'm an intermittent user, and I'm not a machinist, so two, two big strikes against me. However, this program has done everything I've asked of it, 
and I'm sure it can do a lot more. We're just scratching the surface. So that's the love part for solid cam. All right. So let's cut out. We're actually a little ahead of our half hour show. So that's chamfering in solid cam. Next, we're going to maybe look at undercutting and what else? And maybe eye machining if we have time. Okay. So stay tuned. Sports to Paul here. Catch you next time.